Hey, GovCon Giants family, your host, Eric Coffey here, bringing you another episode of the GovCon Giants podcast. Today's guest, Sarah Dunn, comes from the Capital Group. The Capital Group is considered a managed service provider. Well, what's a managed service provider? Some of you remember when I had my construction company and I recommended a payroll company to handle all of my payroll. And at the end of the day, I would cut one check. They would bring me the payroll reports and all the checks, and then I would hand it out to my staff. That's considered a managed service provider. And so today we are going to lead you in an episode of education where we're educating you on how the things that you need to grow your business and how to do them. So today, Sarah's Capital Group, where she actually helps small businesses who are focused on government contracting. They help with things like 401k, accounting, and more. So we're going to talk about all of that and more in this upcoming episode of the GovCon Giants podcast. Thank you so much. I hope that you enjoy this episode with Sarah and also for those persons who reach out to her, she has a checklist of things that you need to help you go to the next stage, the next phase of your business. So stay tuned for this upcoming episode with Sarah Dunn. So I'm Sarah Dunn. I work with the Capital Group, which is an insurance and employee benefits firm specific to government contractors. Um, we also uh, have a proprietary commercial insurance product called GovTech, and I'm the founder of Women GovCon, which is a networking organization of C-suite powerhouses in the industry, coming together to win more contracts and create team opportunities. Okay, so let's start off with... Yes, so I believe in being a specialist. Uh, now in, in days, we have way too much to worry about, especially from an employer standpoint that is so important to have a trusted advisor that knows your industry. So we have took it upon ourselves as a capital to specify in government contracting, meaning we have departments that are handling the innuendos of contracts from in-house attorneys to compliance. Uh, we have HR consultants and of course, um, employee benefits and insurance division um, to really get down to the bottom line of your policies and unlock any additional savings or avenues for better coverage. All right. Now, uh, before we actually started um, this particular interview, we were discussing that you worked at previously at a commercial firm, commercial insurance. So firm. I actually worked for a national insurance okay, carrier, right. a health insurance carrier. Right. And what was very interesting about that is I used to sell to people that are um, in the position that I am in now. And what was unique about that is I saw so many firms that didn't have that specialization in government contracting, not knowing what they were talking about when they were trying to address the needs of the clients without truly knowing what those needs were. So let me, let's me let talk about this from a small business perspective, right? I'm a small business, I'm a minority business, and you know this contract says I need this particular requirements for insurance. So what's unique about your particular products? Absolutely. So when you have requirements that are set forth um, in terms of liability, number one, um, what's, what's key about my firm and about having a trust advisor in general is unlocking, really going in and highlighting and, and crossing out coverages that you might have that you don't even know about and you're paying for substantially. So when you're working with a firm that isn't handling government contractors, uh -huh. they don't know what you need and what you don't. They don't know what you can get away with. They don't know the loopholes for savings. They don't know the protection that you, you need. Okay. Um, you know, and a big one that comes into conversation, especially nowadays, is cyber protection, cyber right. security insurance. Right, right. So. No, that's interesting because uh, I think that my biggest expense in life is insurance. <laughs> I mean, all, I think, I, you know, you can pay off your house, you still have to pay insurance. You can pay off your car, you still have to pay insurance. You know, your business might be cash flow positive, you still have to pay insurance. So, I mean, insurance is a big part of my life. And one of the things that I can say that I'm not really good at is insurance, and particularly for me, health insurance. Like, I look at all these different policies and I have no idea how to pick insurance products. But I do know, and I learned this very early on in my career in business, was uh, being in the construction industry, and that's my background, that as a construction professional, when I was seeking to get bonding for my construction projects, they told me that I needed the proper accountant, construction accountant that handled 
that. And so this makes a lot of sense to me in the same regard is that as a government contractor, we need a company that handles and turns products that also know about government contracting insurance. So that makes a lot of sense to me. I just still, I'm a little bit fuzzy on, okay, some of the, you said you create savings for us because other people have blanket policies. Like what, what areas where you, do you find that other companies like maybe overinsure or add that you guys like know, like you said, like before you said cut off the fat? Yes, exactly. I love trimming fat. So especially as we're getting closer to summer, um, <laughs> with that being uh-huh. said, so one thing that I found, and I, and I saw this a lot working on national carriers, specific for, for small businesses, is so many of them are on a fully insured medical health policy, as an example. And what's unique to me at that is so many people aren't considering alternative funding. So when you're fully insured, you have, like you mentioned, a ton of that put in there. It's a, it's a blanket price. What you pay is what you pay, and there's no negotiation. Right. When you start to work with an agnostic firm that's looking at all of your different options and showing you the power of alternative funding, you're able to take pieces of it out, which small businesses think would only be available to the larger companies, and that's just not the case. And when you think of alternative funding, a lot of times for a small business who is so dependent on their cash flow, You know, um, you know, below ten, above five, above ten. You know, where did we start seeing that cut? Because you know, at some at one point, I had twenty three employees. Okay, do I see? Can I see a gain in which are probably twenty employees? Do I see a gain at ten? Like, where does that start? Sure, that is a great question. 
Um, oftentimes in small businesses, we see them going to a PO model, which makes me want to cry. And I'll tell you what's why. a PO model. So a PO model is a group of small businesses coming together for the purpose of obtaining insurance. Oh, right, right. Now, just right. like socialism, it sounds like a great idea until you put it into action. So what ended up happening with a lot of these PEOs is everyone pays a piece of blanket price, right. but they're paying way more than they should be, and they don't have access to the claim information that truly tells the story of their finances. And that's a prepared big deal. Right. So how can, because... This I'm, why, I'm ignorant. I don't know anything. Oh, about. Exactly. I don't have insurance. So you, this is why we have specials. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell me, <laughs> why is that? Because I... We, you know, we, we did that for, uh, we did our payroll. They do this, one of those models. Sure. And they threw it in our health insurance. Okay. I didn't know it was called PO. PO made it still. So PO is a, a blanket term, really, for right. models very similar to okay. that. However, they they suffer in a lot of small businesses because they they tempt you with free education and, and you're in a, a pool with all businesses like you. Yet they're taking advantage because the healthy groups in that in that pool are paying for the people that are sick in that pool. So if you have a young, healthy population, let's say you're a small business and you're an IT firm, minimal yeah. risk, you're in the same pool as a my senior citizen guys. or a construction, <laughs> heavy risk, whatever, like, you know? Like a construction guys, they're out there in the field, they're on high rises, they're swinging yeah. off scaffolds and stuff. And you know what? It sucks too. And I think guys inside the building sit behind the group guys. So it's so funny, even uh, you know, taking a peek at when you compare government contracting IT companies to their commercial insurance counterparts, okay. we notice like GovCon IT companies, they have no claims. And they have the government who always pays right. makes taxes, you know, covering them. Sure. So why are their premiums astronomical? So we find ways again trimming the fat, looking at the facts. When you're going back to the point of the PO, when you're put in a pool and you don't have access to your information and you're growing, it, it, it's it's colossally destructive. So going back to that point, I made about 50 employees when you get to above 50 so 50 and above that is your your time to rise and shine because in the mind of a health insurance company your risk is spread out a little bit so you have more access to claim data that you would not have access to as a small company so they're pulling files and you have the proof is in the pudding you get reporting information if you're on an alternative funding plan Again, all of those things that you have no shot of accessing if you're put into a pool just like everyone else with no individualized data on your group or your claims itself. Okay, so you're you're really smart and I really appreciate that, but we gotta dumb this thing down for regular people. <laughs> so again, I have five employees. Do I call you? Absolutely, you can call me anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can I get like like you know, again, hey, this I'm in, I don't know, yeah. I'm in Idaho, yeah. right? And I'm in Boise, and yeah. I've got five employees, and, you know, I'm paying, I don't know, 3000 a year. Does it make sense to call? Because, again, I'm going to be honest with you, sir. Like, I've only been to D.C. area like six times my whole life, <laughs> right? And so for us, yeah. uh, we're like outsiders, uh -huh. outliers. And so yeah. when we think about D.C., we think about, like, the Beltway, and yeah. um, so we think you guys are like, like really huge and yeah. spent that it's just it's just not yeah. for us right yeah. and we feel we really do not we don't feel connected because we're so far from all the activity that's happened uh, and i would assume just a presumption that it's more expensive yeah so i grew up on a farm in texas and i grew up with our insurance model was if we broke our elbow our church was paying for it we all pulled our money together and we paid for it because what the heck paying premiums or whatever we didn't understand it. so right. i understand that different type of perspective and thinking that benefits are, are you know, uh, so expensive being in the hustle and bustle of the Beltway. Right. So, as a five-person company, let's say you're in Boise, Idaho. Let's say you have employees you're you're looking to grow. Let's say you're you have an employee that moves to DC. You have things that I guarantee you don't even know you have to worry about in terms of compliance. 
So if you have a group based out of, of wherever in the U.S., right. you can call me um, because we have um, a system that will check on all of the federal regulations okay. that are necessary to equip you with proper liability coverage. So, and to save you money, so if you're a five-person group, chances are, and you live in America, chances are you're on a care first full insured health plan, a Blue Cross Blue Shield. Okay. Um, what you may not know is, so you can have, um, you know, typically but, multiple hold, hold on, plans. Hold on, but, but my friend, Mr. Jones, he's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> my insurance oh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's a nice guy. We all like, right? I'll play that top. Yeah. You know, but... When you're looking at your company's number two largest expense, is it better to have your high school buddy consulting you, or is it better to have an expert that can save you money and address your needs? That's a mic drop. Too. So, <laughs> I love it. so I love it. you know, and, and going back to that that five person company and thinking, you know, I don't have any options. I have to be on this plan. Well, sure, but do you know? off of what you have currently, what is available to you. Right. So going back to that fully insured care first model, you might not know that you have an opportunity to take it an HSA option. Why would that be important to a small business or any type of business? Because those HSA plans, deductible first, but you have pre-tax benefits and you can use your HSA money, which they give you a credit card to use for medical expenses, um, you can use it to your medical expenses for, for free tax, or you can actually um, invest that in your 401k or different stock options. Okay. So when we're talking about getting savvy off of what we have, that's a way. If we're talking about getting savvy on different options, that's something that, again, going back to that trusted advisor and that specialist,
and you may have a better suggestion than us just, you know, taking a beat. Yeah. And, and a little, I appreciate your confidence in, you know, <laughs> in taking it by the horns, yeah. but there is a better way. There is sure. a, a better way. That's why you're here to say, yeah. maybe a better way. Like, we get this podcast thing. You're going to help me figure out a better way. So sure. I'm about to lose six figures of this. Sure. Year. So one of my favorite things to talk about is due diligence. Yeah. And one of the services that we can offer GovCons is um, if you are entering a new contract, right. whether you be a, a prime or a sub, buyer right. seller side, we look at every policy that you have from your predecessor to what your current goals are and we review all of that for you so if there is a chink in the armor we're unlocking it before excuse my french but shit hits the fan so the best way to avoid a fire is prevention okay. and that's really the best way to tackle it now let's say something happens let's say it's too late and you're you're the prime and you're working with a terrible sub now right. what do i do sure. so we're happy to, to offer one-on-one -on -one consultations on that we're happy to bring in our network as well if there's added evidence that you need okay um but it's really going back to that upcon mafia trust your team get some specialists um and know that a lot of people go through the same thing right you know and it, it sucks how much we hear about it and you know part of doing business with the government it's great to do business with the government because it's it's protective and it's safe to an extent and you're getting it paid. But the struggles is you also have the government that's coming after you if something goes wrong. So um, again, going back to protecting your assets, going back to having trusted advisors to perform proper due diligence to ensure that that doesn't happen, and making sure that you have the proper team to take. What is it? It may cost me nothing to to call you up. Oh, you call me, yeah. I'm always offering free consultations. Um, I could tell you that for me, like I said, I grew up on a farm in Texas, never had money, lived here for three years, lived in a basement because I could buy myself a house, whatever. But my thing is, I want to save so much money because I want to work as hard as the employers that I'm trying to help solve their problems for. I want to know what that feels like. I want to be in the trenches and I want to know their struggles. So every day I get on the phone with the CEOs and I hear their story and I hear their, their pains and their pressures. And rather than make it about my insurance platform and, and our offerings, what are your needs? How can I cater what we have in store already to, to fill that for you? Because there's too much to worry about that you can't possibly know everything. So, you know, one thing that we have started with the capital group about a year ago, we started a, um, an organization very proud of it's called Women in GovCon. And Women in GovCon. Before we go there, can you give us your contact information? How would someone reach you? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So you can reach me um, best way is my cell phone. I pick up anytime that I'm not talking face to face with someone like you. Can you reach your cell phone? Um, yeah, my cell phone is my is my hotline um, okay. and my email as well. All right. So cell my cell phone is 203-751-0158. Please right, no slow spam. Down, slow down. Oh, all right. No spam. 203-751-0158. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Email. So my email is s. D U N N at Cap Group, which is C A P S and Patrick Group Financial dot com. Okay, can I find you on LinkedIn? Absolutely, find me on LinkedIn as well. Is there multiple Sarah Dunn? There probably is. Unfortunately, it's a common name. Right. Um, Sarah Dunn, the Capital Group. Yep, the Capital Group. Okay. And if you see a Ferrari on a post, you're in the right place. All so, right. That's about the Ferrari story. Sure, sure, sure. All right. So I'm gonna make sure, just in case anyone yeah. chop, you know, they sign off, and we will have all this information on the show notes wherever this interview is posted and publicized. So we'll have all that information available. Right. But just in case for people that were listening that had to run off the door, I want to make sure they had it before we finish up. All right, so tell us about Women in GovCon. Sure. Um, so to tell you about Women in GovCon, I'm gonna tell you about Ferraris first, um, because okay. we had a uh, some time to talk about insurance, which I know is so much fun. But my favorite thing is cars. So, well, I like the insurance aspect because you talked about saving money. And every small business in America wants to save money, has to save money. You know, again, you, you yeah. have two choices. You can make it or you can save it. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. And, it, you 
know, you, you touched on an interesting point because it's not just about the savings. So, and I think that this is kind of a perspective that you and I might have that right. other people here may not. Okay. So being from Texas and moving here, um, what hit me home and I found very interesting is insurance and employee benefits, like I mentioned before, it's your number two largest expense in most situations. Absolutely. And there's a lot of companies here that have a lot of money to spend on on, on things like that because they want to attract top talent. You know? right. So we're working with, with some big names in, in the marketplace that if you go to their website, on the front, front page of their website, yeah. first thing, it literally tells you what we're looking for in someone that we're trying to ta- attract as a new employee and how we're doing it is by having these outstanding benefits from 401k to benefits paid to right. insurance all stuff, but it's listed amazingly to me on the front page of their website. It's nothing about their company. Right. It's about the benefits right. that they're offering to attract that top talent. Right. And, you know, especially when it comes to fertility benefits, they're rare, especially for small businesses to have quality you know, benefits like that. So, if you have something that you're offering that is outstanding right. and you know your options mm-hmm. because you have that trusted advisor, uh-huh. throw them on your website because it will help you attract the right clients that want to work there. No one will want to work at your company if they're trying to get pregnant and, and don't have access to the benefits they need. And such. So throw, throw on that out. But yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, yeah. no, if it distinguishes yourself in some kind of way, um, especially when competing for the best talent in mm-hmm. the world. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So talking about some of the best talent in, in the world and going back to the Ferrari. So the best way to talk about it, insurance to me on something that common people understand is, is car insurance. So I like to bring up the example of you work hard, you buy a Ferrari. Right. Right. Are you going to drive that Ferrari off the lot with no coverage? I <laughs> hate my life. If God forbid you crash and you're driving to see at a park. Oh. So, I mean, I'm sure you wouldn't let your teenager drive it too and have that life. No, actually, you know, it's funny because when you actually buy my friend PS Lambo, you get it wrapped so if it gets scratched, you can just um, take it off the wrap and fix that back and not actually the car. Yes. And yeah, so Lamborghini thought about that. They actually wrapped it. That so, he, and he scratched this as well. <laughs> when well, he took a garage, he scratched it one night. Go figure. Go yeah. figure. So, again, reasons why we have insurance in sure. place. Now, what was something really fun that we did in a way to get thought leaders in the industry talking is I worked with um, Ferrari of Washington and we partnered together on events um, to promote a networking group that I founded called Women in GovCon. And Women in GovCon is a networking group of powerhouse females coming together with the intent of winning more contracts. So what we've seen happen actually pretty organically is there's been proven ROI amongst teaming opportunities based off of people that were too afraid to share ideas about their business. You know, maybe not too afraid. Maybe there's pressure and there's so much competition here. But when we started getting those thought leaders talking to one another about their successes, their failures, their goals, their visions, their commonalities and their differences. We made magic. And so in the fall, we had a, you know, obviously it's tough to get people out doing COVID, so what do you do? You, you weave a Ferrari in front of their face and say, let's get outside, grab your mask. So we ended up working with Ferrari to partner on some events, and we ended up taking executives out to test drive their own Ferrari for the day. They want to the salamander treated like, you know, queens. But the whole point was not to you know, shower them with this elaborate event. The whole point was to do my very best effort in creating that sticky factor right. to build a strong community that was already there. Right. And so we've seen so many different, you know, networking groups in this industry that, you know, it's, it is very male dominated, the, the nature of GovCon. And you know, I'm a veteran father, a single dad, and three older brothers. It's how I was raised. Mm-hmm. No problem, but not sure none of these females do either. But what was missing was some of the added love that I truly feel Women in GovCon has been successful in enhancing. So, and one of my favorite examples is 
one of my favorite companies is Gatekeeper. They have a really cool products, very innovative. So they're doing facial recognition across borders. Mm-hmm. So when your car drives in, regardless of how heavy your tints are, what you may be hiding in your car, they can see right through it, identify your face, know what's in your vehicle. They can even see through the mask. I was like, that is freaking awesome. Right. And so my girl, Lynn, she ended up coming to our events. We built up a strong connection. We ended up getting her in the right room with the right people that would help her grow her business that also needed support for a great product. So we look at the concerns and the needs of these individual companies, nothing having to do with insurance or employee benefits, but we're solving problems by connecting the right people. And none of that would be possible, just so you know, if I was consulting on pet stores, if I was consulting on, on various things. I feel like in order to become an expert, I don't know if you've read, uh, it's one of my favorite books, it's called 10,000 Hours. And it preaches about if you dedicate 10,000 hours to perfecting a subject, you will be a master in it. It's proven in hockey. That's why they say like Canadians are great at hockey because they start so young. Right. So, and yeah, a lot of them do end up becoming professionals, but they put that time in. And what I want the executives and women of Gothai and just executives in general to remember and keep in mind is whereas we want to take on the world and we think we can handle it, you have to take small bites and you have to pass the plate right. because we can have a great potluck together, but if you just have cheese, you can't make the mac and cheese, you know? So, um, so some Southern uh, metaphors for you, but Absolutely. you know, that that's where we go on that. That's really our, our mission. Um, you know, this summer we uh, were taking um, the Hankley, which is a, a tiki yacht. It's out in St. Michael's. Um, if you've ever seen the movie, Wedding Crashers. Yeah. So, wedding crashers, there's a football scene, I think it's their Thanksgiving football game, okay. and it's filmed at a place called In a Perry Cabin in St. Michael's, Maryland, to a, a yacht that my company uses um, specifically for networking events to create these organic, organic teaming working opportunities. So, behind the scenes, behind before the start of any event that we do, I'm taking a list and I'm, I'm Sherlock Holmes, I'm identifying who my players are, who my keys are that I need to help support and link up and match, and who player, which players off that stem can I branch out onto to help them? And again, taking away any sales aspects that I have going on and making it about the client, you know? So I guess my big message there is know your audience, know your client, know you can't know everything, and pass it off to the right people know how to handle that specific you know aspect that, that you're looking for. Uh, so what type of uh, individuals are in your organization on book cover? So women describe me like a typical profile of one of the, the, the persons or companies. Great question. So we um, we're an elite group in the sense that I am matching the best of the best thought leaders in the industry. Um, with that being said, we have a lot of mentorship opportunities that arise, but right now we're focused on bringing in members that have a minimum of around 15 to 20 mil okay. minimum in right. revenue. Right. And right now, every single member, and this is how we've grown our group, and this is how we, we did it, I believe, the right way. Every member was referred in from either a client of the capital group, a partner of the capital group, or you know, someone that we did our homework on to make sure that they were the perfect fit. So it's not, you know, Joe Schmo's calling us, you know, to try to get in. So for our group too, um, there are no membership dues. That was something that was near and dear to my heart. I did not, knowing that we were targeting um, females in the knowing that we have a lot of mothers in the space, I want to be cognizant of this time. So, you know, I, I fed it very carefully every single member in our group to make sure that number one, this was something that they wanted to be a part of. Number two, is this something that, you know, you feel that you can share your ideas comfortably to talk about those successes right. and failures, right. but not have that pressure. So we have enlisted sponsors. Um, my friend Paula here at Cyber Vice National 8A right. is one of our co-sponsors. Um, we have Edge Commercial involved as well, and a few other players. And uh, we're the ones behind the scenes 
thinking of those players to invite, really creating the opportunities and speakers for educational aspects as well. But we're paying for the events, so it's no burden on the members at all. So if small businesses are looking for, you know, more mentorship opportunities and are interested, you know, in, in hearing, you know, one of our, our talks on, you know, how to create balance being an executive leader and who to pass the ball to in various fields so you can increase your ROI and you can have more money at the end of the day to keep your business afloat. So right now, our sponsors, um, what's very key to me is this is not a sales organization. I might be a salesperson, but I will never tell you that. And I make damn sure, you know, none of the people in my circle give off that impression because our needs are that of our client. And that is what I'm loyal to. Sales and whatever else happen naturally when you care about the person that that you're affecting, you know, and I believe that and it's proven. So even on our women in Govcon group, so we have our different sponsors that are, are bringing in these referrals to network, but all of us are on the same mentality of what do they need? What do they want to talk about? And they tell us because we have that trust and that stickiness of now, whereas I was planning events, this is so funny to me, I went over to an executive in my group's house to have s'mores on a Saturday night and she invited us all over and we have, it's like this, This uh, I say I, I planted the seed, but the seeds were already there. They were scattered around the earth and now, now we are starting to prosper and see those seeds spread out. So really happy about the organic growth there. Very happy about even very early proven ROI. And I just think that it's important, you know, regardless of being male or female, to support one another and to have the courage to talk about your experiences. Now, a lot of our audiences, they're not at the million dollar mark. So how can we get involved? How can yeah. the people listening to this, how do they get involved? So I would recommend um, talking to me about a consultation about, you know, if you are trying to work with someone that is in that range, okay. you know, if you're trying to grow, maybe if that's your goal to be right. someone like that, yeah. you know, I think it depends on... Well, I, I can tell you this, I encourage everyone out here, uh, my small businesses, you know, this is this is where, uh, that's my comfort level, right? Um, I'm not comfortable at the $1 million mark, so yeah. that's my comfort level yeah. up there, and so I'm, again, I'm pushing those, and you know, everyone doesn't hear it all the time. Everyone doesn't receive. Yeah. So for those that do receive, that are want to get there, and they're and that's their desire. What what can? Yeah, and there's a ton of uh, different you know groups out there. My firm actually specializes. We love the little guys. They're they're not little in our hearts. Right, so right. under you know 500 employees, like under a million revenue. Right. That's that's actually our, our specialty. You know, okay. um, we're not a large firm ourselves. We do have a national footprint, but. We focus on the small businesses, and we focus on creating that transition. And, and I don't mean to cut you off, but sure. remember the definition of small business, right? Is yeah. different for a lot of people. So yeah. we really small yeah. business says, you know, again, under 500 employees, under 100 million is still small. Yeah. But really, yeah. for us, you know, like you said, we're only under a million dollars. Yeah, I think it would be really looking at what would be that company's specific goals, okay. and really looking at what partners I already have in my bracket right. to assist them with that. Uh, so if they were, you know, more of a technological focus yeah. or more of, you know, something else, well, me or marketing or whatever. What about like janitorial services? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, in, in terms of what? Uh, let's, so we, let's say I have a janitorial services company. I'm a female. Um, I have someone in my group. She's a female janitorial service company. She did 1.2 million last year. Sure. They're looking to grow. Yeah. Um, I have another female janitorial service coming out of Tennessee. Really help people in that position. I mean, at a checklist, that's really the easiest way to to, to show and track your, your growth. So for those, oh, those, what's your checklist? Can you get yeah, it? Yeah. Our website yeah, and we yeah. make it downloadable. Yeah. So. I wouldn't hold off on that because it's not that formal. It's, uh, a, it's a consultation checklist. Uh, so okay, so they call I, you. Exactly. Okay. So we go through it together, and I list out for your company size and your goals, this is what you should have in place. 
I know this because of I'm benchmarking and I already have because I, I do my research, my homework before I talk to the group. I look at your company size and your industry and what other companies of that same size and industry have, and I make sure that you have all of those things and more. And I want you to have more, you know, if depending on, on how we can finance it, because and there's there's so much stuff out there that like free tech credits that you can get, right. you know, to attract that top talent, but making sure that you're in line. So um, we can run through that together. That you know would encompass all things from health and welfare, you know, property and casualty, 401k, you know, volunteer stuff like that. Right. So absolutely. No, that's great. I, I love that benchmarking against um, someone where you want to be at. That's that's exactly what I do for every. Yeah. When I did the podcast, when I did my YouTube channel, when I did everything that I do, Instagram, I'm always benchmarking those people who are ahead of me. So that's that's perfect. I like that. Yeah. Why well, take you 45 minutes to get to that, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah, like, yeah, there's so people much. want to start with the checklist first. Like, you know, everyone yeah. likes to download a little sheet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so funny because there is so much insurance. There's so many different realms. And yes, the checklist, but let someone else take care of it for you. Right. Why are you wasting your time on it? Let me deal with it for you. I'm at high level tell you that this is the stuff that you should be having, but tell me who's completing that work for you right now. Who's handling your open enrollment? Who's handling your benefits? Just because we don't know. We don't know. Yeah. We don't, uh, again, we, like I said, um, you know, we don't have these kind of conversations every day, so I, I really do appreciate uh, people, you know, whether they feel it's a boring subject or not. Again, I thought government contact was a boring subject. Found a way to make 500 videos on it. <laughs> you know, so I found. I mean, I've almost yeah. had a million views on yeah. subject, the boring subject of government contract. Okay. So I think what makes it exciting and interesting for me is the fact that I can save money, which helps me make more money, and then, like I said, I can attract great people, which helps me get better contracts. Okay, and then I can protect my downside because Warren Buffett says, you know, rule number one: don't lose money. Rule yes. number two: follow rule number one. Okay, so. I can tell you the liabilities in my life, okay, personally experienced, and everyone knows my story, who's heard my story before, was the result of uh, not having proper insurance. I can tell you, I lost um, a lot of money. And so uh, I know the, the value of insurance, I know the benefits. Um, I also had a scenario where insurance saved me a lot of money. I had a fraudulent lawsuit against me. Um, for seven hundred, it was seven hundred fifty thousand plus they owed me the quarter of a mill, so it was about a million dollar swing. And the insurance company covered the cost of my legal expenses, which essentially um, brought that seven hundred fifty thousand dollar suit against me down to a five thousand dollar settlement. Man, have you heard of EPLI insurance? I've never heard of EPLI. Man. I'm not an insurance specialist. So, I just know that 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 whatever that was that my policy saved my. A double S. So. so for our government contractors, too, yep. and for those of you who don't know about EPLI, we have a problem with that talk. So EPLI yep. protect you from a ton, especially in today's day and age. EPLI okay. insurance is protection against, um, let's say you get sued for yep. racial discrimination, for right. sexual assault, Ooh. or you know anything that people could complain about, right. you know, people problems. So EPLI covers your back against those types of lawsuits okay. and not enough people know about it and are talking about it and are getting hit of, like huge by it. I would say EPLI and cyber insurance are the two that not enough people in, in government contracting especially right. have and are talking about. And it's the two that, you know, obviously you want your medical, obviously you want your Okay. Right. Obviously, you want all of those other other things, but you need to protect yourself, and you need to know what's out there. Right. And you can't do that without specialists. No, oh, that's good. No, that's good. That's good. Now, yeah, if I want to connect with you to talk more about the woman at GovCon, I'm interested yeah. in that particular aspect. Same way. Same way. I'm a one-stop shop, so I uh, I literally pick up the phone. That's a um, you know a, a perk of, of being my age, I suppose, but. I will answer the phone at all times for the clients. Um, if you need something in the middle of the night, if you have questions, I am here to offer free counseling. You know, I am here to to be a guide in insurance and employee benefits or a connector for various realms of GovCon. You know, same way that we were able to today. 
uh, is there a website for me to go find them? I can go check it out. So right now, um, we are funneling all of our posts and media through LinkedIn. Okay. Um, so it would just be my, my profile on LinkedIn. We right. are, you know, working on a media page as well. So. Oh, that's fine. No, I'm just to get a message just so we know. Yeah. And so some of the reasons why that, or, you know, that, again, I want to make sure, I want to set the tone for people because, Again, I don't want everyone just reaching out to you, right? Yeah, yeah. So some of the a good a good reason, you know, some of the good reasons to reach out to you for women at GovCon uh, would be like mentorship. Mentorship okay. for small businesses, small businesses would be key. A lot like subcontract opportunities. Subcontract, I can tell you my primes in the group are hungry for yeah. qualified subs. And a lot of sub small businesses don't know what they're looking for, but I do. So uh, absolutely yeah. connect with me on that. Okay. All right, and then you said networking opportunities as well networking. yourself or the government. Yeah, absolutely. So um, anything, you know, insurance and employee benefits. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so uh, I mean, ultimately, um, you know, we can find mentors right, yeah. right here, just by oh, talking to you. Absolutely, absolutely. Wow, yeah. that's great. Well, no, Sarah, listen, thank you for coming on today. I enjoyed the conversation. It was great. You know, anything else you want to say to me before we sign off today? Um, you know, I. I just want to thank you, uh, number one, for all the work that you've been doing. I've been checking out your podcast and you get me excited. You know, insurance and GovCon is exciting. It's right. not boring. Right. And we need to bring that message home. So thank you. I think we did that today. Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care.